One Shot Podcast Twitch stream and the Dungeon Dome. I am James D'Amato, your host and game master. Uh, we are about to enter the first title match for season one of the Dungeon Dome, and that is going to be for figure fighting. Unlike all the other matches for the Dungeon, Dungeon Dome, figure fighting is not D&D 5th uh, edition. Figure fighting is a custom system uh, that I came up with based on D&D. It's sort of a supplemental mini game uh, for D&D. Um, before we get too far into the game, I want to introduce our players. And I will note that these are not just performers. These are also spiritual mediums who can channel extra dimensional events that are happening right now in another universe. Uh, first up is Cat Cool. Hey. Cat, how are you feeling today? Feeling pretty good. Uh, who are you playing for us? I'm playing Mega Starlight Surprise. All right. And next up are our uh, challenger. Well, I mean, you're both challengers. Rightful right now. Victor, right, I believe is the term. Yeah. Our rightful I feel like victor. I won. Mm. Yeah. Uh, our, our rightful victor is Aram Barshan. Aram, Hi. thank you so much for showing up and, and, and uh, playing. Who and being you? alive. Yeah, and being alive. <laughs> Actually, yeah, I feel like everybody can thank Aram for being alive. We're all very happy about that. I am pleased as well. Um, who are you going to be playing for us this I week? I am Aram? playing Jesse Teledrin. Who is the I think it's a Teledrin. I'm Teledrin? Jesse. Yeah, well, <laughs> J Jesse is the only name that I knew. Yeah. Ooh, Jordan already is uh, putting in some bits. Uh, Jordan may have uh, read our uh, rules for this. Um, I believe 100 bits will give him the privilege of. Oh my God, I wrote all these rules <laughs> down and then I hid them in a place. Uh, 100 bits. Uh, when the stream gets rolling, he will be able to re-roll any one die as he sees fit. So oh, Jordan, uh, get ready to hold on to that power for a bit. Uh, so yeah, I actually don't remember Jesse's last name. I've just been using I Jesse's first name. I think it's Teledrin, but it, yeah. Jesse owes all that matters. But I want to point out a few things before we get started on the stream. Uh, can we cut to uh, the close-up cam really quick? Uh, so what you see here are little inspiration towers. Uh, these were sent in to us uh, by Miscellaneous Musings, uh, who that's the name of their Patreon account, and you can find them on Twitter, at ItakeTheMoon. Um, they are inspiration towers. Uh, we can put uh, dice, or what I'm gonna be using for this, inspiration tokens, just uh, to rest on top there. They look a little bit uh, cooler than uh, just having them splayed out on the table. Um, the other thing that I want to point out is Aram was kind enough to bring over, if we can cut to the overhead cam, uh, this is the editorial version of his world book for God's Fall. Uh, I'm not going to be showing off the inside because there are so many corrections that Aram <laughs> is making because he is a, a genius and a perfectionist. <laughs> uh, but uh, Aram is actually, for this figure fight, going to be fighting one of the monsters uh, from this world book. Uh, so if you haven't listened to God's Fall yet uh, and like you're sort of wondering what the hubbub about is about, you can see some of the creative genius uh, in that world uh, in today's match. Um, and just so everybody, I, I will show off this. Uh, he, he is going to be facing a screaming horror, uh, which is going to look a lot more glorious in color. Uh, <laughs> but it is I, it's something so horrible that I feel like it, I have to leave up to him to describe it. Uh, we're going to then cut, let's cut back to the long shot here. Uh, so those are the neat things uh, that we're playing with today. Uh, but like I said earlier, today's match is a figure fighting match. Uh, this is a combination of gladiatorial combat uh, and figure skating. Uh, so they are both going to be facing monsters. Uh, however, it is more about the way they fight their monster uh, and the story that they tell through that fight. Uh, they're not trying to kill that monster as soon as possible. In fact, they're trying to keep it alive until the final round of combat. Um, so, uh, and deliver it a delicious finishing blow. Uh, so, I can't believe I switched off the monster page. The first up, uh, we're, we're, we're going to be trading off on these. I just need to know its hit points, and they are right here. Okay. Um, so before we get started, on, no, no, yeah, we're, we're getting started right now. Uh, so we're going to be trading off. Uh, Aram, uh, we, we want to, uh, if, if he needs to leave, we want him to be able to leave as soon as possible. So uh, he uh, is going to be going first. Um, 
the way this works, uh, based on his character stats in Dungeons and Dragons, he has three stats uh, for us. He has style, endurance, and finesse. Uh, Just keeps getting better and better. Yes. Style uh, allows him to, uh, th that is his like uh, basic flair as he's uh, performing. Uh, that's going to be what he rolls every turn against the monster for his match. Uh, the next up is Endurance. Uh, this is a limited resource of dice. Uh, in this case, Aram has five. Okay. Um, we'll just give you five Endurance dice. Uh, those dice uh, are dice that he has the option of throwing in at different moments. Uh, whenever he takes damage, he can uh, optionally throw in an endurance die to remove damage, or he can add them to his base roll uh, to give himself a better roll uh, and not risk damage. Ah. Um, and then finally, uh, you, he has uh, Finesse. Finesse is uh, basically a stat between him and the monster. Uh, it is his wisdom and his dexterity uh, mixed together. He's essentially been practicing this fight with this monster. Uh, and every time he would take damage, he subtracts his finesse first uh, because it, it shows their restraint in damage done. Um, with all of that out of the way, this is mostly a story game. And all of the points, I'm actually just going to take this match sheet because... I am going to be the only one recording points and things. Fair enough. Um, all the points only matter really at the end of it. The rest of us is, is of it is just us having fun. Uh, so first up, what is the theme that Jesse chose for his monster match? What what is he exploring? Jesse, because of how he is, would focus most of the theme on himself. Mm -hmm. So he's just elaborately decorated in roses and a long cape that he'll walk in and throw off right away. And his <laughs> hair is done perfectly. And everything about him is absolutely perfectly thought out. Dramatic moves, dramatic music. Mm -hmm. Like lots of, if you think about it, think old 1980s figure skating when it was all roses and opera. Yeah. Right? Like, like it's, <laughs> you know, it's that, right? Yes. Beautiful. And then the, the least amount of thought went towards the creature because all he cares about is that. Whatever creature it is, he'll defeat it, as long as it has a picture of the Game Master's face, like crudely drawn in crayon on a piece of paper and tied over the creature's face, because that's what he's here to kill. He was <laughs> denied his rightful a treasure, and he's here for revenge, and revenge only. Beautiful. So uh, the, the theme that, that we have for this one that, that he submitted to the judges is Jesse, which yes. I, I think yes. is beautiful. Yes. Uh, it's, it's very, very good. Uh, so... Now I want you uh, to describe Jesse's entrance into the arena and b feel free to be as explicit as humanly possible in your description of your costume. Oh, absolutely. Because yep. that's, 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 I mean, that's what figure skating, that's 50% of it. It's like in w WE with all of like really flash entrances and mm -hmm. then it's the Undertaker and then all, all the lights in the arena yes. go out, right? And there's oh. like a hush. Yes. And then there's a, a single violet light on the door where he is going to walk in and it just reveals that he was standing there the whole time. He's mm. cloaked and he's hunched over and then you just hear this voice kind of over the PA. The greatest archer who ever lived <laughs> was denied his true victory. And then there's like <laughs> images of this great hero covered in roses and the crowd absolutely adores him, but a villain, and then there's this dark, dark light of this cartoonishly <laughs> exaggerated figure with horns oh, and a tail right. floating in midair, held aloft by flames, right? Well, I think this is like the entrance of your monster, too. Yes. I think on different yes. tentacles, there are like crude, yes. uh, like representations, maybe drawn on corpses of people that you killed in anger. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Family this. members I found, you know, whatever I could come across. The and screaming horror. And, and as soon as he sees it, he would just throw this giant cape back, which is like, which like has like wire in it, so it made him look twice as big as he was. He just kind of throws it to the ground. It's covered in fur, weighs forty, weighs forty pounds. Draws a single arrow, each of which is entwined with a rose, mm. and the rose becomes the uh, the the feathers at the end of the arrow, and marches towards the center of the arena, Perfect. rightfully claiming his prize again. Perfect, and 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 this uh, the screaming horror is is pumping air through these corpses. So it's creative. Like this is sort of the soundtrack. It's a soundtrack of screams of like, it's almost like a theremin, 
but like even spookier because it's three screaming corpses or four screaming corpses. It's like that first machine that ever talked. Have you ever heard that? No. Where it was just a plastic face uh. and they made air blow through its lungs oh, and it was like, really good idea. yeah, it was awful. Mm. It's awful. Uh, so, so that floats to the center of the arena as we begin. Uh, the way a figure fight works, there are five strokes. Uh, this is an elaborately choreographed battle between a hero and a monster, uh, but there are only five attacks that will connect, and they each risk killing either the hero or the monster. Um, if either one dies early, it is a deduction of points. It is not disqualification because death is an expected part. It is a traditional part of a figure fight. Um, Aram has elected to fight a Screaming Horror, which is a CR 7, meaning the base score for his match will be 70, based on his performance that may go up or down. Um, things uh, that Aram has, Aram, uh, based on his beautiful description, is going to be starting off with three tokens of inspiration. Um, inspiration can be spent in the following ways. Um, and he got one because of the audience? Uh, no, no. That, that audience member, uh, Jordan, has the right to re-roll any one of these gotcha. rolls. Gotcha. Um, so I only have to like one of them. Yes. Mm -hmm. I like that one. Yes. <laughs> uh, so uh, inspiration, you can use two points of inspiration at any time to regain a lost uh, die of endurance. Or at the end of a stroke, you may spend an inspiration to roll a d6 and just add it to the score that is going to be totaled um, gotcha. for that stroke. Okay. Um, but uh, first up, we just do the base roll. Um, and for that, the monster, because it is a CR7 monster, is going to be rolling 7d6. Oof. And Aram is starting off with 4d6. Gotcha. Uh, at any, uh, during any stroke, you can throw in uh, an extra d6. No, it's good that I have some then. <laughs> and uh, let's see here. We have this 5 and 7. Okay. Do you have to throw them in at the start of your roll? Or That's you a good question. Um, you, can, you can do it later. I, I, I gotcha. Think, I think so I can see what you roll and then decide whether I'm going to spend one or not. Exactly. Gotcha. So uh, let's cut to the close-up cam and see what I managed to roll here. Okay. okay. So 9, Oop. 10, 22. 22. What I well, I can't beat 22 with 4, so I'm going to have to throw in 1. I hope I roll well. Uh, Molar Ducks is 100 bits to make Cat <laughs> do fidget spinner tricks. <laughs> I'm good. Ooh, you hate to see yep. a roll like that. Yep. Um, so Not great. I will remind Jordan right now that he has the power, if he so chooses, uh, to re-roll any one die here on the table. Um, so he could re-roll one of Aram's. Aram rolled two ones. I did. Which will result in him gaining uncertainty in the next round if they are not re-rolled. Um, or, I guess if he just wanted to crush, <laughs> Jeffy, uh, he could re-roll one of the lower rolls uh, for the monster. Also yeah. fair. He can keep that chambered for later. Also, if there are any Team Rockslet fans out there, uh, to re-roll dice, all you need is 100 bits. Right. Um, you can also, based on the descriptions that we're about to do, uh, award Aram uh, certain things. I'm actually going to just read off uh, what the stream is able to do. Uh, so 100 bits will buy a reroll of any one die. Uh, 200 bits will remove uncertainty from a hero. Gotcha. Um, 500 bits will grant a hero a point of inspiration. Uh, you can spend 1,000 to 2,000 bits to insert a deadly trap into the arena. Ow. Whew. Oh, wow, Jordan's just being cruel. Rerolling a lower Oh, monster. no. All Oof. right. Slightly so hurt. That's, that's slightly worse uh, at, at 24 instead. Um, you can insert a deadly trap into the arena. Uh, starting at 1,000, you can put 1d6 of damage in the arena. Uh, both characters are using their normal HP. Right. Uh, what is Jesse's hit points? Uh, his hit um, points are... I love Yuri on dice. That's great. Yes. Ha. His hit points are eight. Sorry. Uh, I could have this... Oh, uh, 32. 32? Yeah. Okay. Um, so 32. Oh, boy. Yeah. This is going to be tough. This is going to be tough. Jesse's arrogant. He would have he, he picked a really hard fight. Yeah. This is absolutely a difficult fight for him to pick. 
Um, but based on your description, uh, you can probably uh, get the upper hand here. Yep. Oh, and finally, you can re-roll entirely either the monster or hero's dice uh, for 2,000 bits. Wow. So the stream, uh, you have a couple options like how you based on how you might want to interfere. But as it stands, we have 24 over here um, and 14 over here. So right. that is 10 yes. damage That's not great. coming at Jesse for Oof. the first part Walked of this. right into it. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, actually, I don't know why I gave you that. Because... <laughs> oh, re-roll both of those ones. Oh, well, maybe not. Oh! All right. Oh, well, actually, oh, sure. you, Thank you. you should re-roll these. we got to have your luck field in here. Not right. great. <laughs> it did still end up with a one, but it is better. Yes, uh, thank you. So uh, that is... That would give me... So, so yeah. You're, you're at 25 hit points now. So Moderately damaged. Uh, no matter what, no matter what, uh, there is a seven-point difference, yep. um, which uh, dealt you seven damage, um, and you will gain one die of uncertainty for the next round. Do I get... I thought that my... So this doesn't help me at all? My flawless? Oh, you're finesse. Yes, right. absolutely. Excellent. Uh, thank you for reminding me how to run my own So game. I only took one point of damage. <laughs> you only took one point That's of That's not damage. bad, then. Yeah, so, so not, not bad at all. Right, so, he's, so he's, he's big, but I'm a dancer. So, yeah, now we are going to uh, chart out this uh, fight, essentially. Cool. Um, and I just need to finish that. So if that was 17. I know why Jesse would have taken a hit. Because he's waiting. Yeah. He wants, he's waiting until the arms line up because mm -hmm. he wants to take a shot to run an arrow through both of them and pin them together because yes. that'll keep the, the creature busy. But he had to take a shot in order to do that. So maybe like did a little roll or a flip, but still got hit a little bit. Uh, so uh, for, for the stream, uh, Jesse is uh, the heel of the original Dungeon Dome. Yes. He is a dark elf ranger uh, who is just incredibly arrogant and graceful and beautiful and everybody loves to hate him yes um but and uh, charming and intelligent now it, now uh <laughs> we come to the point where we are going to narrate this first stroke Excellent. um so uh, like the i i think the monster uh starts first because like it, it seems like jesse is building up to like a dramatic totally. uh, moment here um and Jesse likes to wait. Yeah. The, 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 the screaming, uh, like, closes around you, and then, like, uh, there's sort of, I think, the, there's definitely a live orchestra pit uh, that's in oh, the arena snap. with you guys. Totally. Yeah, everybody's ah, got a live orchestra pit. Very cool. Totally. And, like, big drums start hammering down um, as, like, red and purple lights uh, shine down on the field as uh, these, like, simulacrums of, uh, of starlight uh, start crashing at you. Um, and there's, there's, I think that there's just like this, uh, like string that's holding a very high pitched string that's sort of <laughs> undulating with, uh, that figure who's like tied up in the center of the arena. Perfect. Um, what, what, what is Jesse doing? Jesse is, again, he's, he's getting closer, trying to find this perfect shot where these flesh puppets, basically, mm -hmm. with, you know, the Dungeon Master's face on them, would align just right so he can sink an arrow and pin them into each other to keep the, the creature occupied. So he's willing to take a shot in order to get that shot. So, uh, yeah, I, I think what happens while he, he is right now uh, dancing around these flesh puppets totally. as they crash into the ground around him, kicking up dirt in the arena, which of course is catching the lights that uh, the light show that he has like specially designed for this. All pinks and purples. Yeah, so there, there's beautiful pinks and purples that, that he is gracefully diving through as he tries to uh, get a perfect shot lined up for himself. But that does not appear on the first stroke. Instead, you take one point of damage. What, what does that attack look like? I would say that he's just doing these little cartoonish, exaggerated flips mm -hmm. and turns. And every, every time he goes in the air, a cascade of rose petals follows, falls him. He's got a little teeny bit arrogant over one thrashing vine and a single thorn. Cuts Ooh. into his oh. shoulder as he flipped over and he lands. There's just this one trickle of blood and his eyes narrow. What color is Jesse's blood? Uh, it's 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 like a I, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't know what color drought blood is. So I'm, I'm gonna Are guess you? they're like Vulcans and it's green. Oh, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. That's cool. Copper based blood. I yes. like it. Yeah. I like it. 
Um, so yeah, there, there's a one trickle of elegant blood at the end of the first stroke. Um, I don't think there were any deductions there. Uh, we're going to move on to stroke two, where once again our hero is going to roll um, at least 4d6, and the monster will roll 7d6. How many is going to add in? Um, you can a, add as many as you want. Gotcha. Um, so I've, I've spent one. All right. Okay. Oh, God. What a punishing roll here. Ooh, um, ouch. Yeah. Did we go to the close-up cam on that? Yeah, let's let's see uh, if there's... That ooh, is harsh. That was a five. And this was a five, too. Okay. Yeah, it was. Um, so that's 10, 22, 28, and 30 damage Jesse's coming at... Yeah, going all in. All in. Oh, this is a beautiful stroke for Jesse. Okay. Okay. Oh my goodness. And I, oof, my rolls are not hot today. This roll, yeah, the rolls are not doing well for you. And I also, I hate to do this, but I ah. forgot to roll yeah. the uncertainty. Uh, right. So there's one point of uncertainty, because Jesse, a very confident person generally. Um, so that's actually 33 is the monster's total. Oof. As Jesse um, comes up against, let's see, that's eight. Um, 10, 15, We 19, rolled two of those 20. sixes, James. Uh, oh. Two of the sixes on the monster. That's All awesome. right. Oh, that yeah. is very good. That Lost one six. Good. That's good. Yeah. Um, thank you. So, yeah, 30 minus the six. <laughs> I'll thank you. Jesse would say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that is. I think there's a penalty 24. after ten total is spent for showboating. This is actually uh, he is not using his inspiration for no. this. He used his endurance. Correct. So endurance is not uh, count for showboating because it's an, a limited resource. Oh, and we want to reroll Jesse's ones oh, here. Oh goodness! All right, be very very helpful. So yeah, that that could have been brutal without. Oh, oh my, my god! god. <laughs> well, he's got a six out of it, but still, yeah. the rolling is awful. Once I went to the hospital, they drained my luck field. It was all a scam. <laughs> oh my god! Ugh, what a what a horrible thought. Yeah. Um, Jesse just so filled with rage. Yeah. He's losing his focus. So. Oh no. This is. It's JJ style all over again. <laughs> That's twenty two, uh, twenty six, and twenty eight. Ben plus seven, right? Oh, inspiration point Ooh. for Jesse. Excellent. Well, thank you. Charmed, All right. Charmed, I'm sure. So, uh, and there was there another reroll Jesse's yeah, double ones? Yeah, reroll Jesse's double ones. Okay. Oh. oh my god. Well, actually, no. Jesse has to roll Thank those. You. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, James. Yeah, there we, there we go. Thank you. There we go. That's another ten on top of that. Uh, so that is. Oh my god, I'm so bad at basic <laughs> math. Why did I get into role playing, you guys? <laughs> so that's twelve. That's. Uh, 22, that's 32, and that is 36. Awesome. So, this this time, uh, it is most certainly in Jesse's favor. Excellent. Um, Do I get to add my, fit, my finesse to that? Uh, so that's only when I'm taking damage. That's only when you're taking damage. Yeah. Technically, you don't want to do more damage. Although, you know what? I think you have the option of adding finesse's damage. Mm, I mean, it's... This will be the first shot. This is the first so shot. May as well this draw a lot has, of blood. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. Um, I I like that as well. So uh, the difference between these. Also, I've been wounded. Mm -hmm. Exactly. This is this it's is appalling. almost not part of the plan. Exactly. Um, Make it look bad. You don't actually get hurt. <laughs> They'll believe anything. <laughs> Um, so no deductions because uh, there was no showboating in this. Um, Although I have burned through all my dice. <laughs> no <laughs> uncertainty dice going into the next one. Yep. Hey, but you've got you've got plenty of inspiration. I do. I'll be spending those quickly. <laughs> yes. Uh, going into stroke three. You you, you picked a very difficult monster. I okay. Did. So I I think because Jesse is doing did a pretty heavy amount of damage. It's 11 damage coming at this monster before adding in his finesse. Uh, so the monster has taken 17, which is Excellent. pretty a palpable hit. Uh, so 
What does it look like as uh, Jesse? I think this is he, him getting that lined up shot that Absolutely. you were referring to earlier. Just waiting again. They're just you know, these just huge tentacles are you know bearing down on him, but the other two are still wavering in front with these little puppets. He's just waiting and waiting for that shot, and mm -hmm. then fires, and the arrow just sinks through the head of one into the head of the other, and the Boom. thing is screaming and pulling, and the and the tentacles would just go to either side because mm -hmm. you know it distracted at the last moment. He just stands and stares it down. Yeah, I, I feel like there was this moment where it was menacing you with, oh, totally. with all of these corpses. And, like, it sort of dived in with all of them together to almost surround you. And I think all the lights in the arena, like, closed up on that moment as well. One but spotlight. that was the shot. And, like, there's, again, this beautiful, like, pink spotlight that comes out emphasizing the blood and damage as you've lined up all, the, all of those shots Trailing together. rose petals yes. that fly through the air. So that was uh, an intensely dramatic stroke two. Um, so now we come into stroke Bye, Rourke. Thank three. You. Bye bye, Rourke. Um, we're coming into stroke three. There is no uncertainty in this stroke at all. Uh, so the monster is just rolling the 76 from earlier um, and rolls lower this time. All right. How, I would like to exchange all of these mm -hmm. for. Endurance dice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so how many does that get me? Uh, so I think you have one oh, I got remaining. One oh, oh, so actually yep. that's going to get you two endurance dice. I shall take those. Um, so yeah, right now you are up against, that's 24. 24. Okay. Oh, it's better. It's uh, better. Only one one. Right? Yeah. yeah. Eh, but that's a two. <laughs> and, and this this technically is not bad for you. Right. Um, uh, this uh, is worth... When a monster wins a stroke, it's technically worth less points, but right. it's still worth points. Yes. Um, and... Uh, ooh, inspiration ooh. for Jesse. Excellent. Thank Hell you. Hell yeah. Thanks, Jordan. Uh, Jesse is warming to the audience a tad. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's the, the shower? Everybody's throwing this inspiration. Well, it's rose petals, right? Yeah, it's I want to point out good, yeah, good. that the inspiration is actually the audience inspiring the uh, artist. Perfect. So it, it is most certainly like people uh, throwing roses and rose petals on the field. bags of it with them. <laughs> Some guy's been selling it out front for five gold a pouch. Who, whoever your agent is, totally. like, like how the Compass Cats is an agent, whoever your agent is was selling bags of Jesse branded rose petals. Absolutely. And if there's anyone selling off-brand rose petals, like a drow just takes them out. <laughs> <laughs> it's Gary. <laughs> yeah, Gary just comes from the shadows. <laughs> exactly. Don't happened. buy knockoffs. <laughs> um... Uh, and technically, the more dramatic your victory or loss is, uh, the better it is for you. You so just have to be mindful and suffering of your, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, what you are coming away with this round is uh, looks like eleven. Um, All right. So the difference here is going to be substantial, as uh, it's thirteen. I'll use all my seven then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thirteen. Because I'll still take a good hit. Yeah. Exactly. Um, that makes that makes sense because he saw the tentacles rushing in to him. He held his ground and took the shot anyway, knowing he was going to be a little bit hit. So that makes total sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was worth it to wrap up two of the tentacles. Now yeah. we can move in for the kill. And he does have You're one. You're going to be in the thick of it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, well, let, let's let's join you in the thick of it. Okay. Uh, so how are you taking the damage this round? So they were both coming at me, mm -hmm. and he just kind of turned sideways to minimize, you know, to make himself as thin as possible and fired one shot to get those two two together, but they both rushed by on either side and mm -hmm. scraped his, his, his chest and back to just kind of tear along with those thorns. Oh, man. And I think uh, the monster, like, uh, pumps air differently into the corpses to make, like, a really high, a sorrowful high note. Mm. Um, as, like, I, I think, like, a blue-purple light, like, shines down on Jesse, who's just sort of splayed himself out to just display, look at the pain and <laughs> agony you put me through! The suffering. I never leave the pain of thorns. <laughs> um, and I, I want uh, to... to 
zoom in on like Jesse's mood right now behind the mask of performance. Uh, he did get uh, a single point of uncertainty here. Uh, this has not gone as planned. And I think uncertainty rather than fear or nervousness in Jesse is just rage, mm -hmm. right? Jesse is rage, and that's why he's my better as a team, because Gary keeps him centered. His brother may mm. be a mangled, shrunken, you know, <laughs> basically, if there was if there's a street urchin, but it lived in the woods, right? Mm -hmm. You know, that's basically Gary, but he keeps him centered because Gary's practical. Right. And Gary makes practical decisions, and Gary absorbs a lot of damage. And so he's, <laughs> he's, not, he's not really used to being on the front lines. Right, right. So, yeah, anything, like, that has put him in a situation like this, oh, I love it. And man, I think this is all excellent use of theme in this, because mm. this is all very Jesse. Yes, it really is. Okay. It so. makes him the martyr. He can be the martyr and the and the hero in the same thing and make him thrilled. All right, so we enter stroke four. Um, now it looks like, just based on the way uh, this match is going, that we're not going to see either the hero or the monster die in this match, which uh, is just fine. But hopefully it is. That's, hopefully that's true. <laughs> missing a certain number of points. Okay. That's yeah. Monster rolled not so great. Uh, yeah. I mean, and that's looking a lot better. So that's 10. Uh, that's 20. 22. Okay. Well, if I roll all sixes. <laughs> well, I mean, not that far off, well. really. Returning a tad. 12. Yeah, so that uh, comes to 17. And if I put in 6, it's 23. Sorry, if I, if I put in the, the 7, it's 23, right? Uh, so that 7 will just reduce damage that oh, comes that's at good. you. Yeah. That's good. So it'll be like a little bit of uh, damage. I'll take yeah, that. Yeah, it's, it's DR reduction. <laughs> yeah. it, it's, so. Nice. So it's it's, not it still wins. <laughs> we roll the monster 1, monster 1s. Oh, oh boy! Jordan oh. coming for blood. Yep. Oh, oh, that's unfortunate. Oh, God, that's that's not good. Yep, Jesse thought he had this. Mm -hmm. so we'll, we'll have to figure out exactly what happened there. I'm, I'm... I love that Jordan's playing both sides of this. Yeah, yeah I Jordan, I know. Jordan <laughs> just wants to see blood. Jordan's about drama. I, <laughs> yeah. I appreciate that. We'll sacrifice everything for the, the, the drama. For the art. I think I have an idea. So it's 12 is the difference now. Yes, we roll the monster hurts. fives. Oh, Whoa. boy. Excellent. Wait. Well... <laughs> That's good. Yeah, I think Definitely I think that good. is good. Though he could have gone for the six too. Um, oh no! Oh no! One of them rolled up, uh, but the other one rolled down by two. No. So actually, that evened out. No, one point. Oh, I one, gave one, one more point. point. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> we're up to thirty here. So the monster is at thirty. Uh, Jesse's still at seventeen. Still, still tough. Uh, yeah. Really, really rough, rough. Place for Jesse, but Jesse is not getting. Oh, I almost forgot. Oh dear. Oh, oh the uncertainty. Oh. Okay. oh boy, that's a killer. I got a good idea here. All right. So if both tendrils are ripping him aside from either part, he mm -hmm. wants to get in close now to do a death shot to the center of this thing because that's where the mouth and the brains are. Right. Sure. So he jumps up and starts to run along one of the arms towards the creature, but missteps, puts his foot straight through a thorn. Remove right? uncertainty. Okay, so I'm removing that uncertainty. Thank you. Tumbles to the ground in pain and is now closer to the creature, but in the exact death zone, like all the tentacles could just crash in on him. Both the puppets are hovering over and how <laughs> he's just like kind of bent over with his bow in pain as blood rushes from him. He's a little woozy and a little dazed and not in the best position. Yeah. Oof. Yep. How's he going to get out of this one? How is he? I mean, that, that is a very, very good question. Okay, so taking 13 damage overall. He's just not a frontline fighter. I mean, that's good, because he's, like, artistically laying it all bare. Yes. This, is, this is who he is. This is Jesse. This is somebody who is a beautiful, violent, angry soul. Who, who has just been wronged by the world and torn apart by this vicious monster. Yes. 
Um, it's literal flesh-eating monst monstrosity. Uh, so we are... Jesse is now sitting at 11 hit points. Yes. Uh, he's got one inspiration yes. as we head into the fifth and final stroke. What can um, I do with a single ins inspiration again? Uh, inspiration, you can add a d6 to uh, your scoring total for gotcha. this round. That's what, um, I, that's what I will be doing. Because uh, I, I think... The, you do have we do have a point of uh, a death on the fifth stroke, which is worth right. twenty five points. Nice. So it could be worth it to you right. to take the dive. Just, just go on the and fifth glory. stroke. Yeah. Um, I've got to survive this one. <laughs> so I think I'll add one to this one. Are we on five? We're on stroke five. Whew. All right. Let's see if I can live. All right. So that's ten. Oh, the story of Jesse. I know. The dramatic. This is twenty-three. Twenty-three. I can beat that if I roll well. Hmm? Ah. Ah, that's pretty good. It's not bad. He'll survive it at least. Okay. So, oh, which one of these? I, I guess this one would be your. Okay. So. That's 17 um, is, is your total, and then also... Yes, it was, Jordan. The scoring total is going to be let's see, 17 with three points of style uh, brought in there. Um, so... I wish I... If, if I was better at basic math... <laughs> so six, so... Uh, the points gotten from this round is going to be a total of nine points um, as, let's see, that's, the difference is nine, that's coming at Jesse. So no matter what, Jesse is not going down this round. Correct. Um, so this but is... so close. Yes. Uh, this is going to be a monster's... Uh, it looks like Monster's Victory, because the Monster won an overwhelming yep. number of each stroke. Uh, but how does this act end? Um, Jesse, like, when we last left him, you know, was just being harassed by the world. There totally. was sorrowful, uh, sorrowful, like, cries coming out from these corpses, these bloated corpses stuck onto this monster. He's just surrounded. He's fallen in the center of them. He's clearly unable to get a kill shot. As he just as even as he stands, he's struck again in the back, which mm -hmm. drives him down to his knees, and the whole creature is just hovering, toying with him, waiting to tear him apart. And I, I think his hair, like has artfully part of it has come undone. Yes. So there are just these beautiful yes. white strands like catching the light perfect. The... Yeah, and full of sparkles. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and he just would stare the thing straight in its many disgusting faces, put his foot into his longbow, so he's holding the top of it here, mm -hmm. right? And he just looks straight at the creature. He's like, no one defeats Jesse and drops an arrow until it hits and lets it go so it drives straight up through his chin. Ooh. And he just oh. collapses to the ground in a puddle of petals and blood. Oh my gosh. And and I think the figure that was bound up in the chair like uh, gets up and just walks and like stands over it, uh, raising its arms up and like this grim, horrible victory as like, uh, your live orchestra uh, starts hitting very, very minor yes. notes, and the, the, the <laughs> arena is now full of red, pink light, and I think a platform raises you up. Yeah. And, Turning and, slightly as the blood spills off the sides. And, and the, the audience is just <laughs> clapping, like a lot of applause. Uh, so let's see what uh, Jesse's point total was here. Um, Jesse started out uh, because he was fighting a CR7 monster with 70 points. In the first round, he got 7. Uh, then the next round was 11. After that, 13. Then an uh, impressive 19. And that was a good finishing round. it off with 9. Um, Thank you. And Thank you. let's see here. Um, for monster stroke, there were 4 monster strokes. Uh, so that gets another 40. Um, there was one hero stroke, so that's 20. Um, and there was no death on the fifth stroke. Uh, this was a monster's victory that is worth 20 oh, yes. points. Um, the hero was not undamaged. Uh, <laughs> no. 
No. For deductions, no. I don't think there was poor use of theme anywhere. There was no early death and no showboating. Uh, so in total, uh, right now, the score to beat is 209. Excellent. Uh, okay. Jesse, for, with an impressive 209, uh, the audience is electric. This is the first time that figure fighting has been performed in the Dungeon Dome. Uh, this is a new event, and it is like just winning over the crowd by leaps and bounds. Even a figure like Jesse, who, you know, it wasn't uncommon for him to be booed as he would just flaunt his hatred for the audience and uh, people who were not him in general. Yes. Uh, like, they, they, they've won him over. They've begun to understand who Jesse is. Mm -hmm. um, but a belt has to be handed out today. Right. A title must be won. And there is one challenger. And that challenger is Mega Starlight Surprise. Uh, so, uh, with that, Aram, you. here's your match sheet. If at any point you need to leave, you are able to do it. Uh, before uh, we cut over to Kat, I, I, I do want to point out, Aram is the GM of the God's Fall podcast. Uh, we are so excited and honored that, that he's joining us today. Also, the God's Fall world book is going to be coming out very soon. Uh, if you are the type of person who likes to consume settings for Dungeons & Dragons or just loves beautiful and colorful fantasy art like I do, uh, then you are going to want to pick this up when it comes out if you miss the Kickstarter. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely. And, uh, I think I can hang out for the next match. I oh, cool. Can hang out cool. For that. Yeah. Yeah. This is, uh, I, I designed this to be a little bit quicker. Right. Uh, Once I'm actually in a seat, I'm not too bad. Yeah. <laughs> So we have Kat's match sheet here, and uh, what is the CR of the monster that you've chosen to face? Eight. CR eight. Wow. What an incredibly ambitious match. Uh, could you use only blue dice? Would that be possible? Yes, I, I would can, like to use I my can own use dice. only blue. Quick a question. Mm -hmm. Is does. Jesse instantly teleports like back into the locker room when this happens, right? I, I think actually he's teleported like he's teleported uh, over to the side of the arena. He's Perfect. standing there with Gary. Yes. He's like holding a bunch of bouquets of flowers yes. and like watching the score totals oh, come absolutely. in. He's like he's like trying to pretend like he doesn't care. Because yeah, of course he's one, but he's eyeing the scoreboard. Yeah, I think I think also he's given. He was must have been given a stuffed animal of some sort. What is that stuffed animal? Uh, I would imagine that. Well, I mean, it's Jesse, so the only thing that matters is it's, it's a stuffed animal of him. So it'd be a stuffed <laughs> animal of him with little stuffed roses. Yeah. Oh, Otherwise, God. he wouldn't even bother to pick it up. Like, what's that? Oh, perfect. Perfect. Uh, that's there's like the camera goes by as Starlight like runs by in a tracksuit and like tries to give him a thumbs up. Yes. Yes. <sighs> Oh. No, no, he did no, a really no. good job. He's like, oh, well, thank you so much. And he'd give you a thumbs up back, and as you walked away, he would turn it uh, down. Cat, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, what are Starlight's hit points? Uh, 58. 58. Yep. And you are battling a frost giant, A right? frost giant. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. Okay, Google. Frost giant, fifth edition. I just need to get its hit points. I searched the web for frost curry. Five editions. <laughs> <laughs> so useful. This is the curry that Robert Frost used to eat. <laughs> exactly. This is useful for no one. <laughs> okay, so its hit points are 138. Oof. So gonna be, gonna be tough to take this one down. Um, but death is not the only desirable outcome. So That is the CR8 one, correct? Because yes. that's what I saw. Yep, that is the that is the challenge eight one. I cool, believe. let's do it. Oh, I don't think roll twenty lists the challenge rating, which is unfortunate. It is unfortunate. Um, okay. Uh, so you are going to be rolling sixty six. The frost giant will be rolling eight. But first, I have to ask you, what is Starlight's theme for this performance? It's hard being a kid and growing up. It's tough. And no one understands. Perfect. Yeah. So I need you to describe for us uh, Starlight's entrance and costume. And then describe the monster's entrance and costume if applicable. Okay. So, yeah. So the, the monster starts on the field. Mm -hmm. uh, he is 
a tween. Yes. Obviously. Tween Teenage. frost giant. Perfect. Uh, and uh, he is on a bench. Mm -hmm. And he was moping. He's moping something awful. I, I really do want to point out that uh, this teenage frost giant has acne. Yeah. And the way they've dealt with this in costuming is there are red rhinestones to emphasize <laughs> that acne. Yes. Just to show how difficult it is being a teenager. Yep. Uh, he has, um, so like, black jeans that are torn up mm -hmm. and... Um, Artfully. Oh, Artfully, paid for it. yes, and a, a white crop top that is also torn up. And both of these things are liberally sequined. Mm -hmm. um, and they are liberally sequined in an ice pattern. You've received inspiration already. Thank you. Um, you're starting with two. So he, he's moping something awful, and to start, he takes out a cigarette, <gasps> a cigarette, and is starting to light it up. Mm -hmm. Mega Starlight Surprise, in her standard Mega Starlight Surprise costume, mm -hmm. uniform, just standard heroic gear. No seat, no extra sequence. Nothing anything. special mm -hmm. comes out onto the field and is like, Barold, what's the problem? And Barold is like, Mega Starlight Surprise, you wouldn't understand. You don't get what it's like to be a tween and have problems. <laughs> and she's like, Barold, I get it. I get what it's like to be a teen. Or, excuse me. A tween. Me, a tween. <laughs> And he's like, Starlight, you don't get it. And he's like, Barold, I really do. And he's like, Starlight, you don't. And with that, he attacks her. Yes. Uh, just sends a whole thing of ice. And when he sends that ice, the thing just clears her. And when it's gone, she's transformed. Ooh. What is her what is her costume? So like we this? have to, you know, we just friggin' do it. She's like, uh she's like, come at the dancing blade! Transform me into an average tween! <laughs> and they just do the whole thing, and it just like but that she just does one whole sweep up from the end her her boots elongate into uh, thigh high, like they go from ankle bootlets into thigh high bootlets. They go to mm -hmm. to white leather, and then her her um her what are they called? Um, tuxedo shorts mm -hmm. shorten up into like booty shorts in white leather, mm -hmm. and then uh, she gets a crop top in white leather. Yeah, uh, and then she gets a, a choker. Um, her her star uh, bun, bun turns into a flame. Yeah. Um, and uh, her cape turns into what's that fabric called? Like um, like like, like shimmery. Sheer. Yeah, mm. sheer in different flame colors. Sure. And then all of the white, uh, all of the white leather starts getting sequins all up in yes. in flame colors. You know. Like a tween! Right. <laughs> uh, like so, a tween Emma Frost. <laughs> yep, and then she gets gloves, bright red gloves, fingerless gloves, clearly. And she's standing there, and Barold's like, whoa! <laughs> uh, and she's like, Barold, put it out that cigarette! And attacks it! Beautiful. Let's do this thing. Beautiful. Okay, so... Uh, we are starting this at stroke one. I will remind the stream uh, that 100 bits will allow you to reroll any one die. 200 bits can remove uncertainty from a hero. 500 bits can grant a hero a point of inspiration. Uh, spending 1,000 bits allows you to post place a trap in the arena. And 2,000 will uh, allow you to either entirely reroll the hero or reroll the monster dice. I like the pun Emma Frost Giant. I just want to point that out. That's good. All right. And first up is 
He this has so frost many. giant. He does have so mm -hmm. many. He's he's a very tough monster that you chose to take on. Um, oh, it's a dude frost giant. I just thought it was yeah. a lady frost giant for no. some reason. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, barrel so, boy. It's got kind of that like long hair that kind of swoops yeah. in front of one eye thing. Uh -huh. Gotcha. Okay. The monster comes in this match at twenty five. Okay, so then I you say I have six to start. Yes. And then I can pick these guys too if mm -hmm. I want. Yep. Uh, the, the, so those uh, can be put in to add extra style points to your thing, but you also have eight dice of endurance, um, and I'm gonna make those endurance dice these black and red just so you have a visual signifier of what's different. Okay, explain to me the endurance. Um, endurance is at, at any point during the match, you can use an endurance die to either reduce damage coming to you or the monster, or you can add it uh, with your regular dice to increase the power of your strike. Okay. Um, I think for the thing, I will spend two of my buddies, mm -hmm. and I will come in with equal power. Is that cool? Okay. Uh, so, uh, again, that is not going to add to your power. That is going to be something that adds to your points uh, solely. So, uh, inspiration is like flair that you're adding to it. Like, you're doing this with such style and grace and inventiveness. So it's later. That, yeah, so that adds points to this. So, so then I won't do that for now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Though if you wanted to go in with equal power, you could spend Whoa. endurance. Uh, what, a, what a good roll. Yep, give her that one, it's great. That one, yeah. That's, that's going to cause or a problem. Or give her both those twos. Someone can get rid of both those twos. All right, so right now, uh, Starlight is sitting at, let's see, 14... 17, 18 uh, against this 25. So mm. uh, you have the option, uh, if you would like, to add in some of your endurance uh, to push this, hopefully, uh, to be a hero stroke instead of a monster stroke, because hero strokes are worth slightly more points. Uh, also, anybody watching the stream can dive in and re-roll dice. Um, or uh, if you just want to go, okay, I, I like the difference that I'm working with. I just want to add points. You can use your inspiration to add points. Oh, an inspiration. Yep. So that just helps me add points. That right. adds points, although you can spend two of these to give yourself an endurance die at any time. Okay, cool. So then I will use an endurance die to, do I pick a set or just does it give me extra? So it will give you, it will give you another. Oh, re-roll uh, re the two. There you go. I think we rolled those two. twos, so I... Her twos are... My twos. There you go. So she rolled... Thank uh, you so much. ...a one and a two, so you got to re-roll that. Thanks. It was a really good entrance. It was a great entrance. All right, so... So I picked up three points. Mm-hmm. So what am I up to now? So you're at 21 versus the 25. Okay, so I would like to spend one of my endurance. All right, roll it. Nice. There we go. Pa, pa. So 26. Oh, man. That was almost a draw stroke. That would have been amazing. Uh, so That's right. Those are worth a those lot of points. Those are worth a ton points. of damage. Or a ton of uh, points. So the difference is only one here. This is not a phenomenal strike on okay. either side. Uh, so that actually means lower points. However, this is a hero stroke, which is worth 10 more points. So... Uh, describe for us how this starts out. What is what is the first stroke of this battle look like? Okay, um, so I mean, I think we got a pretty clear visual on the Barold's main attack was a huge wall of ice right. that cleared Starlight, and, but left her pretty like she burned through it, and there was a lot of steam. Mm -hmm. And then um, she just attacked. Um, with like snapped and uh, did uh, a small pointed fireball. Okay. Um, and just burned through his entire cigarette. Mm. Um, and uh, it, uh, you know, so Dude, he, is it like one of those cartoon exploding cigar things where like oh, he's got the that's perfectly fragments. what it is. Yeah, <laughs> so that there's just a little exploded thing left, and he stumbled back from it, mm -hmm. and he didn't take much damage from it. Um, he just has, like, scorch marks on his face, and the ends of his hair are a bit singed, um, and he stands up from the bench um, and clenches his fists and looks mad. Um, and she hovers up so that they're um, eye level with each other, because she's so much smaller than him. Mm -hmm. You um, ruined a tween's look. It's the most damaging thing you can do to them. It's the worst thing you can do! <laughs> 
Uh, and that's where they are. All right. So that is stroke one. We're moving on to stroke two. Uh, Question. Now, mm -hmm. if I wanted to spend these... Uh, I can make my points better. Yes, correct? yes, you absolutely can. So does it add 10 points per? It or? will add a d6 worth of points. Okay, I would like to spend one. All right, so roll it up. Boop, boop. Five. So five additional on top of that for style. Um, the crowd is loving it. Like, they're, they're I, I, I think... Uh, there are like the people who put this together, the judges themselves, love the sort of uh, melodrama that Jesse brings to the arena. Like th this is this is a this is a bloody death fight. That's <laughs> that's what we want to see out of this. This is not regular blood sport. This is more artistic and meaningful blood sport. <laughs> oh, it's totally about the artistry. And what, what Jesse brought was magnificent artistry. But uh, this fight is a lot more lighthearted mm -hmm. and fun, and the audience is really getting into it. It is very much challenging. You can bring your kids to it. Right. You can, you can right. see Manfred Mancy over at the judges' table just going, bah, 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 bah. Um... As we I'm head. Death of Eight Salesman. <laughs> You're Sesame Street on Ice, right? Yeah. <laughs> and this is Stroke Two. Uh, looks like this tween's getting mad. How would you tell the difference? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, for sure. Okay, so that's ten there. Okay, so twelve, fourteen. 20 and 30. 30 for our monster. Hey. Yeah. This is going to be a difficult one. Yeah. Well, you picked it. You picked a tough one, but that's good. Again, the you getting hit for a lot of damage also makes your match more impressive. Yeah. Like having a really, really right. big monster stroke. Suppose like yeah, three that makes sense. goblins are just like twang, 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 but it's over. Yeah. I've won, you know? So I'm back to having six again? Yes. Okay. Okay, not a great roll for you. No. Um, she re-rolled those tears, though. If someone allowed her to re-roll yeah, those tears. Well, the, I mean, the one is more concerning. Yeah. Because um, one yeah. is, like, getting my confidence shaken or something? Yeah. One, one will uh, create an uncertainty die for the next round. Uh, but you are at 16 right now. Okay. So there is 14 points of potential damage uh, in the difference right now. Um, you can add endurance to try and reduce that. Um, Reroll the one. Re -roll Thank you so one. much. There you go. Six. Six. Nice. There we go. Oh, excuse me. Okay, so how much damage am I soaking now? It's all done here. So this is... 21, actually. I still have your finesse, too, to absorb some. Yeah, and, and your, your mm. finesse. You, you, you're, yeah, you're, the damage that you're taking is not bad. Uh, never think that it's bad. Sometimes it's low and you want it to stay a little low. Um, but uh, nine is the difference now. Uh, including finesse? In, uh, so f No, finesse has not been factored in. Your finesse is seven, so that's going to go down to two. Okay. Uh, cool. Um, again, uh, re roll, I believe. Yep. So, yeah, to re roll that two. Yeah. Thank both you. of them. Both right? of the twos. Excellent. Uh, three twos? Actually? No, no, no. You can't yep. re roll all the twos. Oh, I thought they, you re roll all of them. He, he paid 100 bits. So oh, my, my, my apologies. No yeah. worries. So, this will go back to being a two. I'm learning. Mm -hmm. Just you're in the stickler for the rules. Oh, oh it goes to no. one. It goes to a one. Ah. one. So, you're back down to 20. Hmm. And the difference is 10, which makes math a lot easier. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, Jordan. <laughs> we we roll, roll the one! one. Roll the one. Thank you, Excellent. everyone. Uh, four. Better. Four. Okay. So now we're at a difference of seven exactly, so no points of damage will be taken at all. Yep. Okay, then I think I'm set. Because yeah. that means that I'm still an undamaged hero, mm -hmm. but I don't mind taking a hit. Okay. So this is a monster stroke. Um, 
no uncertainty gained, no deductions right now. Um, well, actually, we don't know about deductions just yet. What does round two look like? Well, I would love for you to fully embody Barold. I would, mm. I would love to take his hits, but what is he yelling? What are his problems at home? God, Beryl's problems at home. Yeah. Oh, no, you don't understand at all. You're just a small, graceful little thing. Look at Beryl. Look at my huge, gangly arms. I haven't grown into my body yet. I knocked over a shelf. And with that, oh, no. he picks up part of the arena and he just starts throwing, like, uh, just huge columns of stone at you. Okay, okay. Uh, so, yeah, it's, um, the camera immediately, like, is with Starling. Mm -hmm. And we, like, the, and, um, the, the orchestra, like, starts picking up really, really fast as we, as she starts dodging in and out and jumping from set piece to mm -hmm. set piece. Um, as, as the columns land, she's, like, yeah, she's jumping. Yeah, she's <laughs> jumping. Yeah. <laughs> Um, uh, and she's like, Barold, no, you don't get it. Size is relative. Right now, my legs are too long and I trip over everything. And then she, bam, hits into something as that proves to be very true. Mm -hmm. And uh, her legs fall out from under her and she just can't make one of these jumps. And she just hugely smacks into something. That shelf was full of cookbooks and we used stone tablets for cookbooks. All of our cookbooks were destroyed. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, yeah, she's just crushed under this huge thing. Mm -hmm. And it's very scary for the audience because she does appear to be a very small girl, and she should be smashed to smithereens in this moment by this huge, like, metal and stone structure. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Perfect. All right, so now we enter stroke three. And, oh, for Beryl. Okay. <laughs> um... So, uh, Muller, so this is going to be uh, to re-roll one of Beryl's dice uh, as we go into uh, stroke three. Just cool. tell us which die you want us to re-roll, uh, Maddie, when, when it comes up. Oh, boy. Beryl had oh, a banger of a round here. Uh, 24, 29, 30, 35. Oh, no. Uh, so right now, Barrel is sitting at 35, um, the highest roll that we've seen yet. Even Jesse, like, mm -hmm. lean, like, is like shows concern for just a second, yeah. kind of leans out from the shadows and quickly recomposes. We roll the one and the two. two. Oh. oh my god! Oh no! Ah. Okay, so uh, the two becomes a six. So uh, this is actually now at 39. Okay. Wow. Reroll the three for barrel. Jeez. That could well, go either way. Okay, so that actually drops down to 38. Okay. I picture a barrel is like desperately wanting to surf. That's all he wants to do, That's but he's a frost he'd be giant. He'd so cool at it. But he can only do it in the Arctic, so none of his surfer buddies can ever be with him. And his right. family oh my him. god, what a nice. roll for Starlight. Nice. Not bad. Reroll those sixes. Oh my oh, goodness. Oh, it could get better. Thank it's you. Nice. Well, two of the sixes Damn. stayed the same because these are one shot dice. Um, <laughs> a little weighted. Mm. <laughs> I, I think so. So that goes down to five and then five. 100 on that other six as well. Nice. Okay. Okay, there you go. So we're down to 28 here for Barreled. Is it Barrel or Barrel? I thought it was Barrel. I thought it was Barreled too. Barreled with a D. Okay. Yeah. So it's sort of like Gerald, but yeah. Barreled. Which is a great name for a moping emo half giant <laughs> or whatever. It is. 27. Oh nice. man. Starlight, one point away from getting a tie here. Um, and no damage uh, coming at you. Nice. So, um, what's he at? He's, he, at a, he's at 28, you're at 27. Okay. Um, you can... I would like to add a die. Okay. I will add one of my... One of 
keys. Okay. Two. So close. Oh my god, you're up to 29. Uh, Difference still one. Reroll those ones for barrel. Oh no! Yeah, oh I know. My god. Uh. Okay. Can she still add another die? Yes. Oh. So that just adds What's three. What's he Because you get an average of three now. Right. Which you get real easy with a die six, and if you tie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think I have to. I have to get control of this fight. Mm -hmm. Yeah! Oh, Very nice. Man. Well done. Thank you. Okay, so that's an additional six for you. Reroll that two for Starlight. Reroll that two? Do I have a two? Yes, okay. I do. Thank you so much. Oh, boy. Thank you, Punquility. Oh. It's yep. a two or three. So, 30. Mwah! Six. All right, so we now have uh, Barreled the Monster at 31, Starlight the Hero at 36, with a difference of five. Well done. The single clap from <laughs> Jesse, and then his arms retreat back into his cloak. He appreciates art. Oh, yeah, uh, Barrel Two's reroll. Oh, oh. Barrel Two's reroll. Oh, boy. So one of them goes down, but the other one turns into That's a, a difference five. of three. Does that tie them? It doesn't. Oh, oh so Barreled is now at 34, Anywhere Starlight at 36. Okay. Close. Close, but no cigar. Yep. Okay. Okay. Um, so uh, we are now at, unfortunately for you, a difference of two, which is... Reroll barrel one. Okay. That's oh. still one. Fate is cruel. 2,000, a, a trap. trap. Okay, um, Silver, you now have four D6 worth of damage that you can do to either Barreled or Starlight. Who are you going to hit? Uh, and you can divide it's them up how you want. <laughs> uh, so, Silver, let, let us know. Uh, do you want 2d6 on Barreled, 2d6 on Starlight, or concentrate all on one or the other, or three and one? Barrel all four. Ooh! Ooh. The shady vape. That's great. So you're going to, uh, no matter what this round looks like, knock Barreled into some sort of trap. And this m may be planned between you two, it may not. Okay. Um, okay. And Barreled is going to take. We'll figure it six, out. The Cobalt's just nine, a stalker. And damage. <laughs> Takes 10 damage? Takes 10 damage out of its. Trap. Out of his. So, so he has like 100 damage. 122. Okay. Okay, cool. All right. So, uh, what does this round look like? Because you, you, uh, when we last saw Starlight, she yeah. was trapped under a gigantic pile of rock and metal. Yeah. Um, so, Starlight is quite strong. She's mm -hmm. an 18 strength. Um, uh, so, she, you know, there is a, a downbeat. It's very tense, and then there's like a, -da 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 you know, that's mm -hmm. the strings start plucking, um, and the stones start shifting as Beryl had turned and started to walk away. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, she slowly pushes that rock. So we get like up. Oh man, we, we we get a if this be my destiny, Spider Man. Spider Man shot. shot of her pushing her of way. Her pushing the her rocks. way out of that, uh, and she's like, Barold, I just don't understand why we can't be friends. Of course you don't understand. My body's covered in hair. Uh, <laughs> and with that, <laughs> Barold Frank. runs gangly over. Um, he's got, uh, as he's running, uh, like there are sparkles shimmering in the air around his hand, and as he swings it down, a giant ice club forms in his hand, <laughs> swinging towards Starlight. Uh, and she notices that, um, the <laughs> that something is wrong. Mm -hmm. Um, something that there's, like, this whole, this whole thing is, right, like, it's a very icy, mm -hmm. Arena, yeah, um, and it's now destabilized. Mm -hmm. um, and she says, "No, wait!" Um, and she shoots 
um, shoots a fire, a fire, well, well, let's see, which one? <laughs> a fireball would be boring. Um, too predictable. Too predictable. Um, bu -bu 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 -bu. Oh, I think she'll shoot Comet. Mm. She throws Comet. Mm -hmm. um, like, uh, and uh, he has like a burning trail um, towards this spot that's too shimmery, that just doesn't match with the yeah. rest of where the, um, the arena is. Um, where Beryl is just like, <laughs> uh, nonsensically, you know, <laughs> smash running. Um, <laughs> And uh, like, uh, uh, ba, ba, ba. and Comet hits into the arena, but like, like clips, mm -hmm. you know, like clips through the floor, um, and starts sending up smoke from where he goes into the ice. Um, but Beryl doesn't, you know, just isn't in a headspace to really process right. the anomaly that he's seeing, and falls into this pit trap. Yeah. So uh, I think this pit trap is even more dramatic. Uh, he falls in and we can see a shot from uh, above. Uh, in the pit trap, there are spikes that are glowing red hot. And as he falls in, the spikes grow out and lash around his various limbs and whatnot. So he has red hot spikes uh, just around his body. There's like steam coming off. Uh, and it's just this very dramatic shot of this like pale blue boy uh, with pale blue skin covered in uh, sequined acne, uh, <laughs> screaming as uh, he's like whipping these uh, iron hot uh, growing spikes out of the ground, uh, screaming about his body hair. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's like my body is my enemy. Um, and we go into stroke four. And I will remind you, you do have inspiration. You can be adding points. Oh, to I think I'd strokes. like to. Um, okay. I'll add, uh, I'll do actually two to this one two because D6. it All worked right. out. Roll them up because if you hit above 10, it could, it could be considered showboating. Oh, no, I thought that was the number of points that I was trying to add. So if you get two D6, if you get like above 10 on this, that will be considered showboat. Okay, then I'll only add one. I thought it was the number of, do you see what I'm saying? And she rolled a six. Nice. Yeah. So what a great. Cool. Yeah, well, nobody could add 10 D6 with gotcha. inspiration. That'd be 10 that'd inspiration be crazy. points. <laughs> that'd be harder to get. Um, okay, so we enter stroke four. Barreled is it, once again back to rolling four. Whew, there and there's a much gentler roll from Barreled this time. Yeah. Um, so this is 10. Twenty-two. One, two, three, four, five, six. Wow. There you go. Oh my gosh. What a, <laughs> what a roll from Starlight. Um, Not too bad. Mm hmm that's very, I think that's very good. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's 22 right there. Um, that was a five. That was a five. Yep. Okay. So I can find five. Um, so that's 27 and that's 31. What a roll from Starlight. Look at me now, mom. Uh, so right now. Look at me now, mom. Before it. <laughs> <laughs> Look at me, mom. <laughs> Look at me. <laughs> Before any rerolls or anything, uh, there is a difference of eight. Cool. Um, so, unless there are any immediate rerolls for the stream, I think we can go right into describing how this works. There's a difference of eight. Uh, so, Barreled is going to take eight damage. Oh, gosh. He's going to take eight damage. Mm -hmm. And I need to let him take that damage. Um. He has to learn. <laughs> <laughs> that's what this is exactly what Jesse says as he's watching. Frick. Um uh so we are on stroke four. Uh yes. Rerolled barreled six. Oh Oof. my goodness. They're making this even more 
Uh, oh, back to six. He, wow. Yeah, he re-rolled it, and then it became a six again. Sorry, they're barely normal. Um, all right. Cool. Um, uh, ba -ba -ba. So Starlight uh, goes dashing um, to the, like, um, the, okay. So um, her, like, the little wings, the, or I guess the stars light up on the sides. Ooh, let's reroll. Oh, that's six, that's six then. then. All right, Five. so he goes down by one. Oh, buddy. Um, the stars light up on the sides of her boots. Mm -hmm. um, and she goes zooming towards mm -hmm. the, the pit trap. Um, which has like the been exposed right. fully, so we can see this, this horrible, this horrible, um, this horrible pit trap. Pit trap full, full of fire spikes. Yeah, it's, it's a puberty trap. A puberty trap. Oh no, <laughs> that's what. That's even is. worse. That's a worse <laughs> damn trap. A pit trap full of fire spikes. <laughs> All of our fire and ice theme. Accurate. Bad. Bad. <laughs> um, uh, and um, she's like starts leaning over the side and putting out an arm as though this is going to be helpful. <laughs> um, uh, Barold, your body is beautiful. Everyone's is. Look, is there a problem at home? You can talk to me. We can work through this. Fire's really dangerous for you, buddy. My dad and I don't agree on everything! Beryl, I don't even know who my dad is. <laughs> Parents aren't that important. We need to stick together, buddy. Every time I try to express frustration, somebody brings up a worse problem that someone else has. I want to feel bad too. <laughs> <laughs> So he struggles and struggles and uh, like when she tries to reach down a hand, she just, he punches it and falls back down into the pit and um, like hurts himself on these spikes really, really Ow! bad. Ow! No! Um, and uh, she tries to help him um, with... Uh, hmm, what would she be even using? Um, uh, like with a thaumaturgy spell, mm -hmm. but all of her stuff is fire themed and it, like, the ropes that she's using burn him even more. Ooh. Mm hmm. All right, so we enter stroke five. Stroke five, uh, has no uncertainty suffered throughout this entire match. Uh, I would like to add another point. All right, roll it up. Boop, ba -doop, ba -doop. That's a five. One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> <laughs> this is cute. That's good, guys. They keep writing stories for the audience. I this love is, that. Yeah, it's it's really beautiful. Good yeah. stuff's happening. Good, I, I like that they, they are role playing back at us. Yeah. It's very good. Just random crowd. That's just awesome. two. It's like, not, yeah. Some orc with a sign. So, uh, Ooh. 33 Ooh. for Beryl. He is uh, in a lot of rage. Oof, oof. Not a good roll. Jesse by now has gone up One, into two, the catwalk three. above the stage mm -hmm. and is just watching from above it. <laughs> like next to all the sandbags. Yeah, exactly. And lights. Yeah. I'm only uh, at 15. The, the, the light is like just dramatically on his eyes. One eye. Just one eye. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I'm only at 15 at the moment. I'm not doing hot. 15 versus the 33 on stroke five. This, uh, you do have three endurance dice that are unused, and if you don't use them, will remain unused. And this is stroke five. This is stroke five. Okay. Well, you should use them on the next stroke, right? Oh, this no, is the this last is final oh, stroke. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. This is the fifth and final stroke. Okay. Um, yeah, so then I should use all of them. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, so, 
I will use, can, what are the things I can use them on? Uh, it's just adding. To, just adding? Yeah. Okay, so then I will use Or you can them use to, them to reduce damage coming at you, I suppose. No, I'll use them to add. Mm. <laughs> it's a little kobold cosplaying you. <laughs> that's the best. Oh, that's the best. Oh my god. Cool. Nice. So 21, 21, 27, 27 to the 33. Okay, so we're at a difference of six. Uh, you only have one point of inspiration. Um, so unless there are re-rolls, that is going to be the final thing. Uh, it does look like Starlight managed to go the entire fight getting undamaged, which uh, is going to be worth quite a bit points. We oh, barreled. we barreled six. Yeah, better. Uh, that's down to four. So we're down to thirty-one twenty-seven. Difference of four. I can't use this to re-roll anything. Um, no. Uh, no, that does not do re-rolls. Okay. Maybe it should. Well, it, but it doesn't. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it, it wasn't available to a ROM, so yeah, yeah. it doesn't. But <laughs> <laughs> Jesse isn't really a stickler for the rules anyway. <laughs> Gonna flutter right past him. Barreled other six. Mm. Okay. There we go. That's. Oh my God! That's twenty-seven, twenty-seven. <gasps> nice. Ah! Oh, cross counter. Ah! Okay. Um. So, boy, don't do anything else. It's perfect now. <laughs> it's really perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Hold. Thank you. Good job. <laughs> Unless you want to ruin something. No, 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 you didn't hear that. <laughs> this is the even stroke, and an even stroke is worth 50 points, though I did not put it in here. This takes a deep breath because it can sense the dramatic moment unfolding. Okay, so what has happened is an even stroke. An even stroke is worth 50 points. Uh, this is where it is not clear that one was uh, victorious over the other. This is a full cross counter. Um, and you're going to be using that to add points? Yes, just please. Since that's raw mechanical, just rolled out right now. So. Six. Hey, that's a six. Okay. Uh, Kat, I want you to describe this final stroke um, as I start calculating your points. Dang. Okay, so she pulls him up, right? He's up out of the pit, and... Um, uh, oh, darn it. I mean, hmm, teen angst versus a person trying to help. Barold's like, ow! <laughs> that really hurt! Why'd you have to go and do that? I was doing just fine. Uh -huh. And Starlight's like, you were doing just fine. How are you gonna get out of the pit trap? It was made of fire, Barrel. You don't have a way of dealing with fire. You weren't even looking where you were going. All you were doing was just rushing headlong into things without thinking through any of your problems. Well, that's how it's gonna be sometimes, Starlight! It's sometimes you just gotta let people work through things on their own! I don't understand why it has to be just everybody on their own! Why can't we work through things together? We're supposed to be friends! And the two start, like, coming at each other. Uh, Barreled, like, takes a huge jump from the ground. I think the lava spikes like snap off of him as he's like jumping up towards her what does what does it look like as starlight is ascending down onto barreled so yeah he goes to do a big punch and she goes to do a big hug mm. and like when they connect it does a bunch of steam mm -hmm. and then they both pass out on the field 
and like you you two are like a steaming mess in the middle of the field and the audience is like up in their seats applauding uh what a tremendous match uh so Jesse drops a single red rose and it flutters to Ooh. the ground and lands directly in between them as they're coiled on the ground. Beautiful, beautiful. Then it nods the slightest bit and retreats back into the shadows. So we had four hero strokes. Uh, one monster stroke, starting with a monster of CR8 bringing in 80 points. Uh, everything adds up to uh, before the... Uh, before we get to the big, really special high point rounds. Um, oh wait, no. Actually, I gotta subtract 20 points from that. Just 20. Okay, so yeah, before we get to the things that really brought in huge amounts of points, uh, we were at uh, 206. Uh, so incredibly, incredibly close, close. Uh, to Jesse, who's yeah. at 209. However, However. Starlight also managed to uh, create an even stroke at her match, which is worth 50 points, Whew. and was undamaged at the end of the fight, which brings another 50 points, bringing her final total to be 306. That'll do it. 306 wins the match and the title. Starlight is the figure fighting champion <laughs> of the Dungeon Dome. Uh, she, like, in, in the judges' booth, she gets that, and somebody brings her over the title belt. Um, the belt is a black belt with gold, uh, plates on it. Uh, what, what does she do with the belt, does she? She holds it up! Yes, and the crowd is just, like, all on their feet, clapping for her. Um, and there's the starlight, starlight, starlight. <laughs> Does the black turn to white as she holds it up just to match her outfit? Oh, oh absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Perfect. It transforms into a beautiful white belt. Um, and I, I want to head backstage uh, with Jesse. Mm -hmm. um, uh, He's already run backstage. He's just like <laughs> pretending he wasn't paying attention, filing his nails, looking bored. And I, I think I think Gary like approaches you. Uh, <laughs> Covered in the blood of merchants. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, I uh, saw what happened. You didn't see anything, did you? Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I uh, saw what happened out there, and I I just want to say that you're still a champion to me. He'd stop and put the nail file away. Gary, you're the only one in the world I care about, and together we'll kill them all. Um, and... Uh, the, at that point, a figure um, who's cloaked mostly in shadow, like, uh, is at the other side slightly of the Slightly more room. shadow than Gary. Yeah, yeah. Slightly, <laughs> slightly more shadow. Like, there's dramatic <laughs> shadows, right. which just sort of emphasize your makeup and emotions. Right. These ones uh, just silhouette him out right. entirely. Constantly with a subway light across the face. Oh, yes. Um, the Morticia light? Yeah, the Morticia light. Yes. <laughs> oh, I so hope you don't mean kill them all. I really, really hope that you've reconsidered my offer. Um, and with that, we can see uh, this figure's uh, hand come into the light. It is a red hand with a large ring on it uh, that has a sapphire embedded in it. Um, and with that, that is the Dungeon Dome episode three. Be sure to join us on Wednesday at 8 p.m. for episode four of the Dungeon Dome. Uh, we'll be streaming live then. Uh, it's going to be a traditional uh, match of Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition, uh, of course, with our own uh, Dungeon Dome twists. But I want to thank everybody for joining us for this uh, weird, interesting match, and I hope you guys have a great weekend! Uh, I want to point you, out, everyone. we are playing on a Carolina Games table, uh, so if you like this table, if you admire it all, you can find this table and others like it at carolinagametables.com. Uh, it's pretty great. Yeah. It, it, is, it is a delightful table, and they have ones that are not trapezoidal if you don't happen to be a streaming monster like us. That's it. It's perfect for uh, us. Yes. Yeah. It is yeah, very it perfect is for really us. Yeah, it is really good at this. Uh, but with that, see you next time, heroes!